Good day and welcome to Hello Malaysia. I am your host, Surati Sanusi, and today we are talking about a topic which is very dear to me because I can relate to the topic today. It's about stroke. And uh, in the studio, I have representatives from the National Stroke Association of Malaysia, also known as NASAM. Uh, on my left, we have Lim Yi Lin. Uh, she's a board member. And the other one, that lovely lady, we have Sylvia Chong. She is the general manager of NASAM. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you and before we talk about stroke, let's get to know both of you. Maybe we'll start with Sylvia. Uh, what's your background and how are you related to the NASAM? Okay, I am the general manager of NASAM mm -hmm. and uh, actually I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I see. Yeah, and in all my career I was involved in the corporate world. I see. Yeah, so when I was uh, taking a short break from uh, my career in the end of 2013, uh, met up with some friends okay. and uh, heard about NASAM okay. and I was introduced to uh, Janet Yeo, mm -hmm. the founder chairperson. Right. Um, uh, there was an opportunity for, for me to join NASAM okay. and uh, I joined NASAM in April 2014. Right. And what intrigues you to become a part of NASAM? Well, I've never actually joined an NGO, okay. you know, and uh, uh, after talking to Janet, I was actually very interested to make a change in and furthermore stroke is something that touches my heart as well because mm -hmm. my grandmother had stroke. I see. Yeah, okay. so I could relate to stroke. I yeah. see. Right, and you, uh, Yilin, how about you? Uh, I'm actually a physiotherapist. For by the profession? Past, yeah, by profession mm -hmm. for the past 19 years. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a student in my second year, I remembered that we were given a project mm -hmm. and uh, I came across a short video of a stroke patient okay. which was the founder of NASAM, Janet Yeo. Right. Yeah. And I saw this part that just jumped out of uh -huh. the, the show it, and she was saying that she, sh she said, I just felt like I had a life when for the first time right. after my stroke, I could squat down and touch the grass and before in my that garden. She couldn't. Yeah. Okay. And so that just uh, sparked my interest in NASAM because she was speaking on behalf of NASAM mm -hmm. and definitely inspired me more in my uh, studying and career of physiotherapy. Right. So I and becoming part of uh, NASAM, what was the uh, reason? Yeah. So. I worked first in a hospital, university mm -hmm. hospital, mm -hmm. for about seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. Then I moved on to a corporate hospital, a private hospital, mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And then I opened my own private practice. Okay. And in this whole process, um, we deal with many stroke patients. Mm -hmm. And along the way, uh, one of the uh, ex-board uh, members of, of NASA, which is Natin Sharifa, I, I have kept contact with her, you know. and. One day, she called me up and said, you know, Yilin, would you like to come on board? Mm -hmm. And of course, I remember NASA because I remember Janet, yes, you know. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is That's the one Janet. that inspired. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. And I said, yes, so she arranged a meeting and right. that's how it started two years ago, wasn't I it? I see. Yeah, two years ago. Right. And uh, let's uh, talk about stroke now. When we say stroke, uh, the first thing that we can imagine is that people could not move, there's something wrong with their movement, mobility mm. especially. Sometimes you can see it from their faces. But can you define what stroke means, mm. Sylvia? Yeah. Actually, stroke is a brain attack. Okay. You know, just like heart attack happens in the heart, mm -hmm. stroke is a brain attack. Now, uh, it happens when the uh, blood supply is disrupted mm -hmm. to a certain part of the brain. Okay. So, as we all know, the blood actually carries the oxygen to the brain. So, and uh, the brain consists of several parts, you know, uh, and, and each part is actually responsible for a certain function of our body. Mm -hmm. So, say for instance, if uh, the stroke actually happens on the left brain, okay. okay, it may affect the speech, you know, or, or if the stroke happens in a certain part, it may affect the movement of your left arm. I see. You know? So, stroke actually affects different people differently. I see. And stroke is devastating because when it happens, it doesn't uh, just affect the patient, but mm -hmm. it affects the whole family. It's true, yes. Yeah. So, and, and further to that, uh, there are two types of stroke. Mm -hmm. One is ischemic stroke caused okay. by blood clot. Okay. And the other one is hemorrhagic stroke. Okay. Yeah. 
85% of stroke are, are usually the ischemic type mm -hmm. caused by blood clot mm -hmm. and uh, the rest is actually hemorrhagic right. which is uh, usually more fatal. Right and what yeah. would be the cause usually of stroke Okay. with the hemorrhage? Uh, yeah. Well, hemorrhagic stroke is actually caused by the burst of a blood vessel. Okay. All right. So when we say when we talk about causes, then we actually go back to the risk factors. Mm -hmm. um, some of the risk factors are like uh, high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. People with high blood pressure are six times more likely to get a stroke. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's statistics and. Uh, uh, the other risk factors are like high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are diabetic are more prone to stroke. I see. Yeah, and people with uh, high red blood count as well, mm -hmm. as well as people with uh, atrial fibrillation, right. which is uh, uh, irregular heartbeat. Okay. Yeah. So, well, how, when we talk about stroke, how do we know that? You know, if we ourselves are getting the stroke or when we see a family member or whoever is having a stroke, what will be their telltales of okay. a person having a stroke? All right, the symptoms of stroke. Yeah. So if you're talking about uh, uh, right at the moment when mm -hmm. the person is having a stroke, mm -hmm. uh, we always go by the acronym FAST. F-A-S-T. F -A -S -T. Okay. That's the easiest to remember. Okay. So F uh, meaning uh, face, uh, facial uh, drooping. Right. So uh, the person who is having a stroke will have a lopsided face. Okay. All right. And A meaning arms. The arms will be weak. Okay. All right. So we usually get a person to test it by holding both sides of the arms. All right. So one side will actually be weaker and dropping. Okay. Yeah. So for S is speech. Okay. Uh, some patients will have their speech slurred. Mm. Right. So, and T is actually time to call the ambulance or right. to rush to the hospital. Okay. And when yeah. you see all these uh, telltales, mm -hmm. what was what would be the first thing that we should do? If you're with the person, right, you mean? right. Well, the first thing is mm. we should ask the person to be in a very comfortable position. Mm -hmm. uh, preferably, you know, where if if it's an issue of their feeling fainting or what, that mm. their legs should be elevated. And right. while somebody quickly goes and call the, the ambulance, ambulance. Yeah. yeah, make sure the room is aerated. Okay, you know, yeah, right. not cooked up. Um, and try to keep talking to the person. I think mm. that's good to keep them as alert awake as and uh, calm. Okay, you know because the person may be feeling uh, right. a bit nervous or panicky. Mm. Right. Yeah. Are, or they, are they really conscious at that time? Because I remember when my mom had it, mm -hmm. as she was talking, you know, even though it's a bit slurred and things like that. But after that, she says she couldn't remember anything, anything. at all. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But so I was wondering whether whatever we, we were saying to her at that moment, she understands mm -hmm. or was she just, you know, in her own mind? So. Does it affect whenever I talk to a person who's having a stroke? Yeah. At that point of time, uh, I think personally that the person is with it. But you see, there's a sort of like a, a short uh, space Mem of right. memory mm -hmm. yeah, loss mm -hmm. of a, during acute situation, so they may not be able to remember. Right. So but at that moment, they, they may. Yes. Yeah. So if we are panicky mm. right. at that point of time, right. it aggravates. So it's very important that we recognize the fast uh -huh. that Sylvia mm -hmm. was saying, right. but remain calm right. and do the needful ASAP. Right. That's mm -hmm. the most important. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, when my mom had the stroke, she was the one who told us what to do. <laughs> she said <laughs> to cut all my, my goals and my earrings and things like that, make me wear something decent because, you know, send me to the hospital. She was the one who was lying down and telling me what, what to do, do telling the whole family actually what to do. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, is she awake at that moment? But when she mm. when she was in the hospital after a few days, and we asked her, she says she, she couldn't she remember, remember anything. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, was that she was she? It was her. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she was really. I mean, she was awake yes, at that moment. Is that she lost her some of the memory? Memory, yes. Right. Yes. So after that, call call the ambulance, or mm. if we can bring the family member straight to the, to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Right. So so. Uh, there's there's something that I read that uh, there's time there's the duration uh, from the person gets a stroke until the hospital it needs to be in that duration yes, that within they can four be saved? hours four hours yes within what four can hours. we save in that four hours what what can well, we do uh, well if if the person is rushed to the hospital fast enough mm -hmm. within the four hours then uh, the doctors may be able to reverse the situation. Okay. Yeah. So there's this uh, medical procedure that they call thrombolysis where okay. they remove the blood clot as well. Right. Yeah. So. But are there some cases where they can't move, remo right. remove the blood clot? Like my mom, they can't remove yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So it's there. So 
what will be the effect of you know if we can't if the doctors can't remove it would there be a prolonged effect uh, well that's, that's why, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, different people are affected differently okay. because uh, the blood clot may be happening on the left side or the right side. Mm -hmm. So it depends actually right. the severity mm -hmm. and the the disability or the you know the dependence in right. future. Okay. So everybody is affected differently. Right. Plus and the, the yeah. general baseline of the health of mm -hmm. the person. Mm -hmm. That's why all these risk factors are so important. Whether mm -hmm. is the patient diabetes free high cholesterol free, you know, to what extent, yeah. That's why risk factors are something that is something preventive that we should start even from a young age right. to bring this awareness. Right, know? and, and uh, talking about age, I, I'm guessing that you do have uh, statistics in your uh, research mm -hmm. about uh, people with strokes. So how, what, how, I mean, what do you find? What have you found mm. uh, in terms of stroke, especially in Malaysia? Okay, we have uh, general statistics. Mm. Um, there are actually 15 million cases of stroke in the world okay. every year. Right. Uh, and in Malaysia, there are more than 50,000 cases every year. Right. right. Stroke is currently the second leading cause of death in Malaysia, even surpassing cancer. Wow. It is second to heart disease. What? And okay. uh, if you uh, uh, look at the more alarming rate, mm -hmm. um, if you try to picture it, you know, every second, uh, six seconds in the world, mm -hmm. somebody has a stroke. Right, whether it's minor or major. Yes, and every two seconds, somebody actually dies oh, from stroke. Wow. Yeah. Okay, oh, so sorry, the other way around. Right. Every six seconds, somebody dies. Okay. Every two seconds, somebody gets okay. a stroke. Right, yeah. and in Malaysia, usually the age that are prone to having stroke. Do you have that kind of statistics? Uh, no, we don't no. have that statistics, but right. we do see a lot of young people mm -hmm. uh, having stroke nowadays. Right, what would be the be, cause usually? It could be due to stress. Uh, smoking is actually a risk factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And uh, high alcohol intake is a risk factor. Right, and are there ca cases where, you know, there's a dear friend of mine who had a stroke at a very, very young age, but mm. he doesn't have any Residual sorts of, yeah, yeah. problem, no risk factor, he doesn't smoke, he, he, oh. have, he has a very healthy life and things like that, but suddenly he just had this uh, fever mm -hmm. and he just got stroke. So what would that be? What would that fall under on the mm. risk factor? Well, uh, was... Uh, the, there's a, this issue whereby how about the lifestyle or right. the season of that lifestyle mm. okay. was that person under a very high stress period plus not sleeping enough uh, eating very fast you know all the, the holistic way of looking at a person right. so that could be a cause as well that could be a contributing factor what we call mm. it you know and okay. and of course there's this this factor where that's this thing that we don't have a right, say right, in nature right, right. of a stroke happening. Mm -hmm. But if we are more and more conscientious of preventing the risk factors, mm -hmm. the chances of that happening in the general public is very, very, very Slim. low. Yeah. Right. So, so that's a very rare, rare freak. Right. Of, yeah, so situation. now uh, the question would be, you know, now you have a stroke or the family member has a stroke, mm -hmm. it's the life after stroke usually the question, you know, people would start thinking like myself. I was the one who took care of my mother right after mm -hmm. she had a stroke. So I was not working for a year and a half just to take care of her because nobody was, everybody else w was working, having their own family. So to me, as I was very, very young, I was only about 18, 19 at that time. So it's something that very new to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my mom, it's like four or five sizes bigger than I am. So I was like really worried on how to take care of her. So I thought of, you know, this thing wasn't, uh, I was gi not given the awareness th about this in any time when I was in school or things like that. So it was mm -hmm. really something that is very foreign to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, so f for a first timer like myself, what would you say that I should do as a caretaker? Mm -hmm. What would be the, my first thing to do before I bring back my mother to the house? Yeah. Mm. I think for me, uh, mm. from the point of view as a medical professional, implementing the biopsychosocial model, mm -hmm. the first thing that I would definitely encourage a carer to do is listen. Right. Listen to the person, listen to the, per the medical professionals that are explaining to you mm -hmm. things that are relevant to 
uh, your mother, care. taking right. care of your mother. Mm -hmm. But then, at the same time, listen to your mother in what she's receiving. Okay. Her, her feedback in what she's receiving. Right. To be able to understand how to empower her to take ownership of her own recovery. Okay. So that mm -hmm. should be the first thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the first for me. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have to go for a short break. Okay. And when we come back, we'll talk more on this right here on Hello Mnesia. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Hello Malaysia with me, Sue, Sylvia and uh, Yilin and we're talking about stroke and before we went for a break we were talking about what stroke is and uh, we were also talking about what should be the first thing that we do if we uh, discover that someone is having a stroke and you know, now we are discussing on what should we do when we are bringing a stroke patient back or the stroke patient themselves, what should they do now they are back at home. So you were saying that the first thing is listen to the person, listen to the doctor and their needs and things like that. So the second thing, what should we do? Maybe uh, yeah. Sylvia, you can say okay. something about that. Maybe I can tell you a bit of uh, what NASAM does. Okay. Okay. So uh, in NASAM, we believe that early rehab mm -hmm. actually reduces long-term dependency. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the sooner a person or stroke patient starts rehab, the better. Right. Okay. Again, subject to the severity of the stroke. Okay. So in Assam, uh, when the stroke patients come the first time to see us, mm -hmm. we will do a, an assessment right. of what the disability is about, and um, we will a actually then uh, provide counselling to the stroke patients mm -hmm. as well as the caretaker. Right. All right. So, uh, because we have to understand when a person goes through stroke. They actually go. Uh, they go through a lot of emotions. Yes. Emotional changes. Right. You know, they go through denial. Right. They go through anger. It's yes. like why me? You yes. know, why me? We right. always think why me because right. why not the other person? Right. You know? So then they go through frustration mm -hmm. be because they can't actually do the things they used to do. Right. They can't even probably lift, hold a, lift right. a cup. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, finally a lot of uh, stroke patients actually slip into a depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in Assam, we feel that emotional therapy is very important. Uh, we will try to uh, try to help the stroke patient get over these negative emotions, mm -hmm. so that then they become uh, more fit to actually uh, begin their rehab. Right. You know, we motivate them. Right. So uh, a bit more about that in Assam. Mm -hmm. We do physiotherapy, mm -hmm. speech therapy, mm -hmm. occupational therapy. Will be like teaching them how to button a shirt how to tie a shoelace, mm -hmm. you know, it's like relearning certain life skills. Right. Mm -hmm. And then apart from uh, emotional therapy and counselling, we also have uh, community activities. Mm -hmm. Right. I so think that is the be part of the community. Yeah, that again. is the heartbeat mm -hmm. of NASAM. Mm -hmm. That's the uniqueness of NASAM. Right. Because uh, we, we do have group therapy where we will actually uh, place uh, stroke patients into uh, levels which are similar to them. Like right. So they mix with people mm -hmm. who are similar to them, mm -hmm. you know. So when they come to Nasam every day for two hours, they actually exercise together, mm -hmm. they do yoga together, and they do, uh, uh, even we bring them out to have te tare, right. you know, to practice ordering their drinks and so on. So that becomes a community. They have bonding, mm -hmm. and uh, they encourage each other. Mm -hmm. They become family. Right. So you see, after a while, that the stroke patients become happier. Yes. And and that is a very good sign in their road to recovery. I see. Yeah. Right. But that that I agree. You know, when we sent my mom to mm -hmm. a physiotherapist place, so she was happy when, when she started doing uh, her mm -hmm. therapy and things like that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, when we brought her home, I think it it's, it was about a month, two months that she was at home. She doesn't even want. To to try and lift her own legs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she, she 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 has a stroke. Mm -hmm. It's on her left side. She mm -hmm. couldn't move on her left side. Okay. So even when we asked her to do just try and move, she says she can't move. She might fall. She might break something mm -hmm. and things like. So there's nothing that we, as a family member, could say to her that she could believe. But whatever. But once we sent her to the physiotherapist, whatever the physiotherapist said, which what we are saying as well, mm -hmm. or we said. She said, okay, I can do it, now she can do it. So at home, before mm. we sent this person to the physiotherapy, what should we do? What should we try and, you know, besides listening to her? But at the same time, we need to, you know, put some encouragement into her and get her up and about again. So what should we do in terms of, you know, making sure that she doesn't fall into depression and things like that? Yeah, mm. so other than what Sylvia has said, right. 
I think uh, the empowerment needs to also be given and focus onto the carer, mm -hmm. and that's what one of the things we are working at as mm -hmm. well in uh, Nasam to mm -hmm. work with the family. And uh, today's dynamic, and maybe when you were 18, uh, the dynamic of the families have also changed, right. you know. For example, uh, today many families have maids. Okay. Right? Right. And so when a person before the stroke mm -hmm. was depending on a maid to do certain things, mm -hmm. after the stroke, the person doesn't want to still be doing some things when before the stroke that was the scenario. Right. Are, that's this what we call the biopsychosocial model, you know. Okay. So, however, there will be certain things that they used to do themselves, but it may look so small and simple. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where we want the patient to take the ownership and give the uh, empowerment, the guidance to the carer mm. on where do you draw the line. Okay. Bearing in mind that before the stroke, this was the life. After the stroke, there may need to be some changes. Okay. But the issue is uh, you can't just change everything overnight. Right. You, you have to time. give it bit by bit. Mm. Mm. And uh, one good way, and I think that would be a way of moving forward also mm -hmm. in stroke rehab mm -hmm. would be a lot of the times, the, the, the patient comes with the maid and then they just leave the person there for the stroke rehab. Right. But now, I think it would be good for actually the carers that have been appointed for the, for the patient mm -hmm. will actually do the certain things that the therapist would be doing because okay. that's where the confidence builds. Okay. You know, so the therapist mm. may draw or, you know, may withdraw a little bit so that at a certain timing, the carer right. can actually be doing more. Okay. But whether you like it or not, when we are dealing with a patient, we are not just dealing with the brain recovery. Mm -hmm. There's a mind component to that patient. So, for example, if I'm a third party, I'm a medical professional, even if the patient doesn't think she can do it, mm. she will still try it because it's a third party yes. requesting it. Yes. So that's that component right. to remember. Yeah. Right. And we just do the best. And when the patient doesn't want to do it, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just this other factor, you know, of right. the upbringing, the, the way the dynamics of the family mm -hmm. is and who they're taking instructions from, mm -hmm. you know. Like one very simple example, I had a stroke patient. Mm -hmm. Before his stroke, uh, he was like, like a GM, mm -hmm. you know, and he would be instructing people and overnight, everything is being instructed to him wow. including the nurse the doctor so the he wife take it. and so yeah he j he just went into instead of a depression into an aggressive a rage yeah right. yeah so when i did therapy with him i finally listened uh, to some extent and i said to the wife now this is how i'm going to do my therapy for the first six weeks okay. it will be very gentle very mild right but everything i do i will ask his permission Okay. So it is not is like it okay I'm for me to do this? So right. I would tell the story a right. little bit and say, and so this is how Mr. So and so did it. Would you like me to try it for you? Right. So, so you see, could that biopsychosocial approach where you, you, you're not talking about the brain recovery but a mind component. I see. And it's so much easier when they come to a place like NASA because mm -hmm. they can see that the others are also doing it. Right. You know? but, that, but it's true, like I said, my mom, when she went for her physiotherapy, it was it was good for her because she can see people who just like her you know recovering from stroke and she has that strength to do it but for the first month or, or so when yeah. i was you know taking care of her it was it was a mental breakdown for both of us yes. you know i was frustrated she was frustrated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we couldn't just see eye to eye with each other yeah. but at the same time you know i have to take care of her so it was really really hard mm. but even that, to bring her, to suggest to her to go for a physiotherapy was harder because she said, there's nothing you guys can do because I can't move anymore. Mm. But, you know, lo and mm -hmm. behold, when she went there for the, even on the first day, we had to carry her, you know, she's like three, four sizes be bigger than I am. So we have to put inside the car, drag her, you know, carry mm -hmm. her inside mm -hmm. the car. Mm -hmm. But when we came back from the physiotherapy, she, she was standing. Yeah. And that was like, you know, I told you you can do this. Yeah. You didn't listen to yeah. me. Yeah. So now, besides, you know, uh, telling the caretaker, what, what can you tell the patient about themselves, Sylvia? Mm. Well, actually, um, my, my personal experience is 
just be patient. Okay. But just be patient because we have to understand what the person is going through. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have to slowly uh, encourage them to regain their confidence mm -hmm. because by not being able to do simple tasks, uh, not to forget that they have lost their dignity somewhat. Okay. So we have we cannot rush them. We mm -hmm. have to be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, and try to encourage and motivate them. That's right. the key, actually. Right. So, uh, like, like I was mentioning, uh, when stroke strikes, then it affects the whole family. It does. You know. Mm. So, uh, I think the difference between a person who recovers very well actually right. lies in the fact of the family support. Right. You know. Yeah. So, in the case of Janet Yeo, our founder chairperson, mm -hmm. I think that was a main key fa uh, key uh, factor, factor mm. that allow her to recover. Right. And actually still live a wholesome life right you know and she, I'm mm, she talking mentioned. about Janet because she was she is the founder mm. of NASA maybe mm. you can you know tell us uh, when the uh, history of NASA a little okay. bit okay yeah so Janet had stroke when she was uh, 44 okay. she was at the peak of her career actually wow. she was in the advertising industry and um, when stroke happened, I think she was waiting for a meeting, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what she told us was she found that she couldn't uh, grasp uh, a, uh, an, cup a cup or something, right. you know, and she thought it was because she was tired, tired or something, yes. she, she was stressed, you know, but actually stroke was happening at that time. Okay. So um, she always also tell us that, you know, if only she had known right. about fast, right. you know, so then she would have recognized that and you know rushed to the hospital immediately. Right. So uh, so you can do fast on your own, yes. on your self diagnosis. No, what? Uh, well, some people are able to recognize it. Okay. You know? Right. So yeah, you were saying it's the people around them. Right. So as she recovered, uh, she actually uh, found that there was very little information yes. and support group for stroke. That was in the nineteen uh, late eighties. You know. So uh, she died decided to start NASAM and uh, initially they started actually at the backyard of her house okay. mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. meeting uh, once a month then once a week right. and so on where did and she get the, the other members to be with her support group um, from friends you know business associates generous donors and volunteers mm -hmm. so uh, after about a year of doing all these support group meetings mm -hmm. she registered NASAM with the registrar of societies and that was in uh, late 1996. Okay. So uh, 19 years ago, actually. Right. And yeah. so far, what kind of services can we get from NASA? Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, it is physiotherapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, uh, counseling, as well as the recreational therapy. I see. Yeah. Right. So. so any anybody with stroke can go to NASA and get some help. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, right. Yes. So uh, when when let's say a stroke patient wants to go uh, to NASA, what will be the first thing that you need? Uh, medical uh, report and things like that. Uh, things like that. Yes, that's right. right. So they will they will come with a carer. Mm -hmm. uh, our physiotherapists will uh, actually talk to them and okay. assess their disability. Right, and this right. open five days a week or seven days a week, every day. Yeah, five days a week. Five, five yeah. days a week. Okay, yeah. that's good. Uh, the other thing is okay. Uh, now we talk about uh, you know having them rehab in uh, at, for example NASAM so what else can we do at home continuing what is whatever has been taught at NASAM I think the platform mm -hmm. uh, for an answer like this mm -hmm. is it is not like as though um, we give you a recipe and instruction mm -hmm. and right. then you can go back and just mm -hmm. do it the issue is in a rehab right there must be very clear goals okay. set and uh, the problem is sometimes we put the patient in a box that how the person should be and, okay. and mm -hmm. what the person should be able to achieve there are more and more new approaches in, in uh, physiotherapy whereby we really want the patient to take ownership mm -hmm. of that movement that they're wanting to learn or that particular thing right the issue is when the patient and your uh, is not able to reach a cup, they mm -hmm. just say, "I want to go back and pick up a cup to drink." Yes, yes. Now, in order to go back and pick up a cup to drink, there is this, this, this. There's dots to right. join to finally reach to the right. cup, and the therapist will then go through with the carer. They can't pick up the cup to reach in one week. It mm -hmm. may take six months. Mm -hmm. So let's break it down into smaller things, mm -hmm. and these smaller things, it must be very clearly stated and patiently repeated every day and it's like a pack you you make with the therapist mm -hmm. you know 
with Asa, the maid, right, right. Or, or, the, or the child, will say, I'm going to check with your daughter, you know, next week, whether did you do the same right, and how right. many times did you do. Right. So that's that, that, that ownership and that's that um, dynamics of not just instruction, go back, do instruction, go back, do. Right. Yeah. So when there's a, a life that we are allowing the person to be out of the box, mm -hmm. why do I have to pick it up this way? Why can't I pick it up another way since I have some limitation? I see. That's what mm. we mean, you see. Right. Let the person decide how she how she he. wants to do right. it yeah mm. and for some cases especially those who have not heard about a stroke rehab and came in later like mm -hmm. they've had the stroke for one year two years yes. they listen to a show like this and right, they can't. right 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 doesn't mean that they still cannot pick up a cup. So now we're going to think about another aspect. Now, how do you still have a life mm -hmm. of what you actually wanted instead of just being at home, right. visiting, by using your other side and helping this to, you know, recover you know, yeah, right. while you're doing it with the other hand or I the see. other leg. It's not that we just have to focus on the part that's weak. The issue is we want them to believe that they have a life after stroke. Right. It's not about recovery, right. it's about a life. Okay. You know? Okay, we have to go for yeah. a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk the life after stroke right here on Hello Blazer. Stay tuned. Right, welcome back to Hello Malaysia with me, Sue, Sylvia and Yilin from NASAM. And we're talking about stroke. And uh, before we went for a break, we were talking about, you know, things, there's life after stroke and uh, things that NASAM could do to help or on the rehabilitation. Now, we talked about NASAM a little bit, you know, uh, about the founder who, who she, whom she herself had stroke. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she had the idea to build NASAM and, you know, helping other people out as well. But what would be the mission and vision of NASAM? Mm. So, um, actually, the, the mission of NASAM is to say, to tell people that there is life after stroke. Okay. And our vision is actually to set up a centre, a NASAM centre, in every uh, state of the country. Okay. So, uh, after 19 years, we currently have eight centres. Wow. We have one in Penang, mm -hmm. one in Ipoh, uh, in Kuantan, mm -hmm. Ampang, uh, PJ, uh, Malacca, Johor Bahru, and KK, right. Kota Kinabalu. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and who do you cater with? To do you cater to only, um, let's say, you know, some underprivileged people who like to seek help from Nasam? Do you, do you support this kind of people as well yeah. at Nasam? Okay. We do not discriminate. We mm -hmm. actually, uh, uh, I mean, the two objectives of Nasam is actually to provide rehab mm -hmm. therapy for stroke patients, and the second one is to raise awareness in stroke and its prevention. So uh, we accept all stroke patients, you know, but um, I think our, our main focus is actually to try and reach out to people who okay. need our help. Right. You know, people who uh, cannot even afford to come yes. to NASAM because they can't afford the transportation and so on. Yes. So, and, and because NASAM is an NGO, um, we are not profit making, mm -hmm. you know, we, we rely heavily on the uh, donations of the public mm. and the goodwill of volunteers and so on. Okay. So, and even the contribution that is paid by the stroke patient is actually heavily subsidised, you know, as compared to the hospitals, right. for instance. Okay. So, uh, by, by having a structure like that, we actually try to cater to people who cannot afford mm -hmm. uh, private health care. Uh, right. Yeah. And in terms of uh, people with strokes coming into your uh, uh, organisation, how about patient who has been like she mentioned you know one two years even three years you know and he has been laying down on, on the on the on the bed for three four years do you accept that kind of patient as well or do you need them to you know go to the doctor and get themselves recovered a little bit then you can accept them uh, in terms of rehabilitation um, no we don't discriminate we okay. will accept stroke patients right know, whether they had a stroke recently or mm -hmm. some time back right yeah. And I'm so. guessing that you know your physiotherapists would be certified and very professional with these people. Yes, they are all qualified physiotherapists. We have 23 uh, physios mm -hmm. and uh, 15 admin staff, so okay. we have close to about uh, 40 staff right. in the whole of NASA. Okay. So apart from the eight centres, we also have a head office, uh, which consists of uh, admin staffs. Right. Yeah. And what kind of facilities do you have? over at NASA? Uh, facilities, we, we actually uh, are more focused in uh, 
therapy okay. as in uh, I think Yili will be able to explain right. it better mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rather than on facilities or equipment okay uh, right yeah uh, uh, just to uh, retract a little bit okay. so to us the issue is you have to be diagnosed that you have had a stroke okay mm -hmm. so even if it was two three years ago somebody in the medical professional deemed uh, accountable will be able to say that yes the doctor told me I had mm. a stroke I see. so yeah so that first layer is mm -hmm. confirmed that they had mm -hmm. a stroke mm -hmm. yeah then the therapist will then do further movement assessments right. to determine what level of rehab should you start with okay yeah mm -hmm. and so um, what NASAM offers basically is First, a walkthrough with uh, a talking through and walkthrough with the, the family and the patient mm -hmm. on where which level are they at, you know? Right. So you have in levels. A basic, yeah, basic okay. levels. What would be the uh, very minimum level of a stroke patient? Um, where most likely they can't use their hand at all. Okay. Yeah, and it's totally limp, and they are on a wheelchair, but they can be willing to come. They can come. They are in a wheelchair. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there. Uh, there is some a little bit of customization on if it's a hand activity for that day now the therapist is going to go around it's in a group right so that everybody is being you know it's like you, you have a competitor right. or a inspira uh, someone to inspire to do something okay and then the therapist will have a rough gauge on what cues they need to give for a certain person okay. or you know just to get the, the energy going right yeah? And they do have some one-on-one -on -one therapies mm -hmm. whereby when the, it is just too difficult, the, mm -hmm. the dot to cross to the next is just too difficult, right. they may give like a booster whereby there's a one-on-one -on -one therapy right. with the therapies that will help them and the carer to work through something that they'll be given to do at home. Okay. And the good thing about NASAM is uh, the group therapy is every day. So even if they're not doing it uh, at home, mm -hmm. if they're coming every day, right. they're doing something and that gets the brain. Working. to activate yeah right. and that's what we want in okay. a recovery right. plus a life you know following right. that and I, I saw because you know I sent my, sometimes I send my mother to the physiotherapy mm. and I see some like a wheel you know she has to hold mm. on to the wheel and start yeah. wheeling with her hands you know and then she start she has to climb three stairs and things like that so mm. what would that benefit her what would that create uh, for her yeah so in order to be able to achieve a movement, mm -hmm. there's so many things that's happening in, in the, the body. Okay. It starts with the brain and actually it starts with the mind. Do I want to do it? I see. So, you know, physiotherapy 20 years ago was just on uh, the physical, physical part. yeah, right. you know, on the brain and the body, the muscle and mm -hmm. the bone. Mm -hmm. But today, physiotherapy has developed with research mm -hmm. and etc. etc. Mm -hmm. And so we see ourselves as movement specialists. Okay. And in order to do a movement, there's a mind involvement. Right. You know? I want to do this now. The next thing is, how do I tell my brain to tell my body to, to do it? To move. Yes. yes. And so you have all these equipments. Right. For some men, they don't like equipments that make them look childish because there's a mind yes. component. Okay. So then we have to think of, you know, for no example, other ways another to do way. It. Yeah. Like one of the activities we used to have in group therapy is sweeping the floor. Okay. Who can sweep the fastest? Those things that we put to the other end. Right. But then we realize some men don't like that. Yes. Yeah. So the meaning. Would, yeah. Okay. <laughs> to, to some, not to <laughs> all right. to some, right. yeah. So then we would think of another activity, mm -hmm. but you see, we want them to engage in wanting to activity. do it in the first place. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's the idea. So that's that's what I think. Uh, thinking out of the box is now and mm -hmm. moving forward mm -hmm. with physiotherapy, rehabilitation, occupational therapy. Right. It's not just okay. The brain needs to recover. You need to do this. No. Right. We look at the person's life. Oh, is the person a role having a role of a breadwinner? Mm -hmm. Oh, if he's a breadwinner, yeah. now we're going to think of different things that's she, much she more relevant do. yeah right. so that he can continue yeah supporting the family right but if he's a retiree or she's a retiree there's no rush she has been having quite a happy easy going life right. we're also not going to come in to say and suddenly her. you have to do all this when right. she can't apply it at home okay so that you know that's the biopsycho social approach nasam has okay one-on-one on one and with a group right yeah. and mm -hmm. talking about you know rehabilitation uh, as a stroke patient you know, let's say sh she recovered some movements and things like that 
should she go um, and continue the rehabilitation once, let's say she has the movement again, you know, she's mm -hmm. okay, even though it's not as strong as before, mm -hmm. but she has the movement, should she continue going for physiotherapy? Okay, so I'll speak like, like how I, I know Janet. Okay. So when I first knew Janet, mm -hmm. that was her earlier time of her stroke, now it's been years. Okay. And, and I've sort of lost touch with Nasam, mm -hmm. and then recently, she wanted to improve something. So, of course, what we say is there's a quantity mm -hmm. and there's a quality. Mm -hmm. And if you want to improve quality, it never stops. Okay. Yeah, you just keep going to right. what's the next level you want. We I will empower it. Okay. Yeah, right. But do you know by looking at patient, the limitation one would can can do? You know, I think you can only do up to this. Do you have that? Do, can you see that kind of limitation towards a patient? Uh, personally, I choose not, not to. to because then that becomes a limitation. I see. So what I would say is, this is the typical standard, but give me a bonus, surprise me. Right. Let's, if you are willing to go that extra mile, so am I. Right. And then we work towards that, you know. I see. All right. Uh, okay. We'll go for another short break. And when we come back, we'll talk more on stroke right here on Hello Malaysia. Stay tuned. Right, and welcome back to Hello Malaysia with me, Sue, Sylvia and Yilin. And we're talking about stroke. And now uh, we want to talk about, you know, the World Stroke Day. What does that mean, Sylvia, World mm. Stroke Day? Okay, World Stroke Day is uh, on 29 October mm -hmm. uh, every year. Mm -hmm. So uh, as for NASAM, uh, we usually actually do a walkathon okay. in the month of October okay. in conjunction with World Stroke Day. Okay. So for instance, uh, on the 25th October, we have our NASAM Color Walk. And in the past years, we mm -hmm. have actually been doing a walkathon for uh, 3 to 5 km. Okay. In uh, Taman Tasik Titiwangsa. I see. Yeah. Right. So, so the family members and the patient will members, join us together. Yes. And the, the public as well. I we see. invite the public to walk with the stroke patients uh -huh. so that they can then understand and be aware of what stroke is. I uh, see. And how to prevent stroke. Right. So that is something that NASAM is very passionate about, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, what we hope for is uh, for the day to come mm -hmm. when everyone knows what stroke is mm -hmm. and how to recognize the symptoms right. as well as how to uh, prevent act stroke. Fast. Act fast. Okay, yes. right. Okay. And moving forward, you know, uh, what would you like to see? You know, we'll start with you. What would you like to see, you know, in the future with yeah. regards to stroke? I think uh, I've put it into three points mm. or three uh, ins aspirations mm -hmm. to transform the the healthcare system and the belief of a stroke patient mm -hmm. number one believe that you can be out of the box you okay. can say this is the life you want once you say and believe that step one be responsible you as a patient be responsible take right. ownership of your right. rehab the doctor take ownership of the rehab number two be courageous okay. it's a challenging journey right don't give up be courageous keep taking a step at a time mm -hmm. and finally is think out of the when you have to think out of the box mm -hmm. you have to be matured mm -hmm. there will be situations where you will just have to let it go and move on mm -hmm. move forward right it could be in in a way of thinking of how you're going to live your life mm -hmm. but don't let the recovery level limit what you think you life can do. should be. I uh, yes. see. Right. You know? And that is really, it's a new way of thinking even for the medical professionals. We are so used mm. to just saying, recover is right. this. Right. But it is not so. Right. You, know? you, can, you can go beyond. Yes, you can go beyond and mm -hmm. still have a life with different uh, ways of doing things. Right. Just remember, you want that life. Right. Then it has to start it. with yourself. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and what's in store in the future, especially for NASAM, Sylvia? Yes. Uh, so as an NGO, mm -hmm. we rely heavily on the public support. Mm -hmm. So we also look forward to more public support, mm -hmm. so that we can actually set up more center, uh, more centers across the country, mm -hmm. and to help and reach out to more people. Okay. You know. Yeah. And uh, one of the other events that we usually do every year is the Food and Fun Fair. That okay. is actually a fundraising event. Okay. We have it every year during the middle of the year in uh, Taman Jaya usually. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is also uh, a celebration where we invite the public to, to, to come and actually buy stuff from the stalls and that in turn helps NASAM. Contributes you know? yeah. towards and NASAM. Yes, and we also hope more um, corporations uh, big companies could actually adopt NASAM mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. part of their CSR program. Okay. You know, 
so that will actually go a long way to help Nassam, to help more people. I see, yeah. right. Yeah. And uh, as a last word, what can you say? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with Sylvia. What, what would you like to say to the, to the public about yeah. Nassam or stroke? Um, actually, I have something to, to share with some uh, everyone mm -hmm. about uh, TIA. Okay, what's yeah, that? Which uh, is transient ischemic attack. Oh. So it is actually also known as mini stroke. Okay. You know, a lot of our patients come to us and they say, oh, they had that. So what happens is uh, it is, uh, it is uh, all the symptoms similar to stroke. Okay. But the symptoms actually go away after a few hours okay. or within 24 hours mm. okay so a lot of patients think they're all, all right you know after okay. resting it is just stress maybe i'm tired I and see. they just do not take any further action okay you know, that could be a warning sign of a full stroke coming later wow okay so uh that i always like to actually highlight to people right. that it's actually a very important factor to know yeah. Right, so the telltales will be similar, similar to yeah. stroke. Fast, similar to fast, facial drooping, speech slurring, mm -hmm. you know, arm uh, weakness, mm -hmm. and it's, it's actually an emergency situation. Right, so yeah. you rush yourself. So do you want to give that kind of awareness to people out there? Yes, that's right. right. And uh, from you, Yilin, what would you like to say? I think the final word would be, uh, as a community, uh, all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, NASAM is representing the stroke, but uh, every one of us can actually, if you have seen this show, talk to somebody mm -hmm. to say that there is life after, after stroke. stroke yeah. that's, that's the real final word we want to say. Don't limit yourself, don't limit people. Remember, you can take that first step. Take that ownership, mm -hmm. and there'll be people mm -hmm. to empower you to the right. life you want. Okay, so if they need more information, I have a lot of booklets here given by, uh, produced by NASA, yeah. especially. Mm. So yes. we have this book on uh, understanding stroke. We mm. have this book on there is life after stroke. So uh, if they need more information, uh, where could they go to? Uh, so, yeah. they, they can actually visit the NASAM centers, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, for people in the audience who is interested to right. know more about NASAM. If you can see, website. there's a lot of branches here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Right. Do you have any uh, Facebook that they can go to? Yes, we have a Facebook page. Right. It's yeah. called uh, National, National Stroke Association NASAM. All right. So, if or they can go to the website at www.nasam.org. Right. Thank you so much, Sylvia and Yilin, uh, for uh, okay. telling you. us about stroke. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Hello Malaysia. Until we meet again real soon, I'm Sreti Sanusi. Goodbye.